guys, good morning and welcome to the magical Frimley Pits. So Frimley Pits is situated on the Surrey-Hampshire border and it's quite a well-known set of pits. Uh, pit 3, the one behind me, that's got the, uh, the big fish in it called Charlie's Mate, a 53-54 pound common which has recently been caught on OMC Tackle. However, in this session, we're on Pit 2. So Pit 2 is quite overshadowed because of the stock of fish in Pit 3 and Pit 1. However, when it got netted in January, which I was here for, 114 carp got taken out and at that stage 60 of them were over the 20 pound mark and we're estimating that over 70 of them have now, now gone over that magical 20 pound barrier so they're well worth catching and not just that they're also stunning fish so the lake itself is around three to four acres in size and is split in two by a big long island down the middle so for this session i've decided to focus on the shallower half of the lake which has the remaining weed left in it I think the fish at this time of year are going to be seeking the last remaining naturals in and amongst the weeds. So the theory seems to be working so far because I've actually got a fish in the net which I managed to catch just as Brad arrived at the gate. Um, and we're going to get that one out now and take a look at it. Just before getting the fish out, I recast my third rod, not expecting to get another bite during the process. Yeah, Brad, we're in. We're on. So as I mentioned guys, I'm, uh, I'm currently on the Frimley Pit 2. Um, I arrived last night, I couldn't resist getting the rods out for the full moon. Uh, and I managed to snare a couple of fish last night as well. And I've got one in the net. And I'm attached to this other fish now. So I'm going to concentrate on getting this fish in. And then I'm going to run you through what I've uh, been doing to capture him in this session. Yeah, it's getting. Right guys, here's the first of two fish that I've landed this morning. A lovely mid-double petal scaled linear. We're not gonna keep him too long because I've got an even bigger one to show you in the net. What an absolute epic start. I've had two fish this morning and I caught two last night over 20 pound. Absolutely buzzing. Right, here he is then. The second bite of the morning being the bigger of the two coming in at 21 pound and what a stunning linear this is. It's my third 20 of the session, what a great start so far and I think there's more bites to be had so I'm going to slip him back and get the rods back out. So guys, as I mentioned, I've chosen this half of the lake, which has got the remaining weed in it, uh, to, to plot up and do my fishing for this session. And that's down to the natural still being in the weed uh, before they die off for the winter. Out there, around five or six rod lengths, there's a big plateau which comes up probably two foot from the silty gullies around it. I'm not actually fishing on the main plateau as I think that's quite obvious. There's another little one a little mound just beyond it, which comes up again, raises around the silty gullies, and I've decided to put a rod on top of that, and that's a rod which has done all of the bites so far in this session. So I was actually here in January when the lake was drained, and it was a great opportunity to see the topography of the lake. And if you ever get a chance to see any of your club waters, syndicates, with no water in them when they're drained down and being netted, get yourself down there and take videos, because they can prove to be invaluable on finding those spots which you wouldn't necessarily find when you're leading around. I'm actually very fortunate in this session in that I've come on a Monday and there's nobody else on the whole lake. So what I've been able to do is spread the rods out a little bit. I've got, now got two on the mound because that's what's doing me the bites, but I've also put one over to the tree on the far margin, which I've actually done bites from in, in the past in previous sessions. So I know that's an area where the fish will visit and feed. The rods have been motionless for a couple of hours. So I decided to freshen things up 
have a recast and then get the brews on. But it didn't take long before the bobbins were bouncing again. Well guys, I said I wanted to get the rods back out because there's another chance of a bite. I've not even managed to put any bait out yet. The middle rod zipped off again. I'm into another fish. Come on. These tail patterns aren't too bad, so... God, they do go well in here. Little bit of weed round his head now. Starting to slow him down a little bit. Hopefully, he ain't got too much more left in the tank. God, they do fight well. Oh, he's a lovely fish. Really dark black. Come on then, here he comes. Yes, get him. Just managed to have the third one this morning. Five fish in total now. Come on, get in there. Well, what can I say? I couldn't be any happier for my first ever time out filming properly for the cameras. My fifth fish of the session, and this one being the biggest so far at 22 pounds, 10 ounces. Hopefully we can get an upper 20 by the time we finish. Get on. Now the rig that's been doing the damage on this session is the Blend D rig. I've chosen to use this rig because the spot I'm fishing is pretty clean, but there is a thin layer of silt on the top. What I've also done to combat that is make the rig slightly longer than what I normally would. Now the length I'm fishing the rig at is around nine to 10 inches long. And I'm also using the blend stiff fluorocarbon, not the soft. So when my hook bait balances out, it's got a bit more rigidity and it'll push it away from the lead and land flat on the bottom. Also to complement this rig, I've molded on some blend tungsten putty. This will just ensure that the rig doesn't kink up and fully straightens out. Now bait wise, I'm using a match the hatch bottom bait but I've also topped it with a pop-up that I've made myself. This gives me the critically balanced effect that I'm after and makes the hook bait nice and slow sinking. It'll then waft on the top of the D when laid on the lake bed. So that's an overview of the rig itself and it's been super effective for me on this session. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to tie it up. So the first thing I'm going to do is take out 12 inches of the blend stiff fluorocarbon. I'm then going to take my size four hook and then place the fluorocarbon against the back of the hook leaving a tag end of around one centimetre. I then create a loop in the line, and then take the left hand side of the loop and start wrapping it over the tag end and the shank of the hook. Wrap this over four times before then pulling the centimetre tag end nice and tight to the hook, creating your whipping knot. Now take your whipping knot and slide it down until it is in line with the barb of the hook. Once in position, pull both of the tag ends nice and tight, fixing your whipping knot in place. Trim the short tag end and blob it nice and tight to your whipping knot. You can now take the hook link end and thread on a size 18 micro ring swivel. Keeping hold of the hook link, you now need to pass the tag end through the eye of the hook towards the point. Trap the D in position to create the size of the D that you desire. You can now secure the D in position by creating a knotless knot, whipping the shank of the hook around six or seven times before then passing the tag end back through the eye of the hook. Next, you'll need to take a blend 50mm anti-tangle sleeve, slide this onto your hook link. You can now tie a twisted figure of eight knot in the end of the hook link, setting it at your desired length. Now take two puller tools and pull your rig nice and tight to seal the knots. You can now finish the figure of eight knot by trimming the tag end off and blobbing it tight to the knot. Now slide your anti-tangle sleeve up and over the knot, leaving a loop. You can now take the blend tungsten putty Mould it around the fluorocarbon around an inch and a half from your anti-tangle sleeve. Now to complete the rig, I floss on my hook bait. You can choose any hook bait you desire. However, I would recommend one that wafts so it sits above the hook perfectly. So there you have it, my completed blend fluorocarbon D-Rig. A super simple and effective rig any time of the year. You should definitely give it a try. With the night setting in, I decided to apply some more bait. I used the throwing stick to do this as I wanted a nice scattering of boilies rather than it all going on one spot. And with the bait in, it was time to sit back and watch the water. But it seemed that applying that fresh bait had an immediate effect. As Brad's just nipped to the, uh, the van for his fleece, 
the middle rod yet again uh, is bust off and you can have multiple bites on here but i've never known anything quite as carnage as this um i can't even remember how many bites we've had now but yeah i'm playing another fish and i'm absolutely buzzing what a session i'm having might be a little bit bigger than what i first thought as well i thought it was only a small one this one Because the net's got on it. <laughs> well, following a little in the action, true to form. Just as the light started fading, the middle rod again has rattled off from the same spot, resulting in this stunning 24 pound half linear. I'm absolutely over the moon with this session. The fish are continuing to get bigger and they're just as good looking. Look at that, absolutely perfect. The sun had now set on a brilliant day's angling and that was our cue to get some food on the go. The full moon was now imminent and I was hoping that the prolific action during the day would continue into the night, but we would just have to wait and see. Well, good morning. The night was very uneventful, um, which isn't a surprise really, because the temperatures yesterday were at 16 degrees and last night it got down to two degrees. We really felt it as soon as the sun went down, the temperature plummeted and the fish seemed to move across the lake to the side into the deeper water. We got this morning, we've reset the rods. It took a couple of attempts. As I mentioned yesterday, I'm fishing on top of a mound, which is just off the side of a weed bed. And getting it on that mound was critical because I put the right hand rod in the end only a couple of feet, if that, away from the actual spot itself and it didn't pick up one bite. Every single bite came off that middle rod which was perfectly placed on the mound. So this morning when I've reset them, it's took me a couple of attempts but I've made sure it's on there sweet. Ready for when that sun comes out and hopefully the carp move back to this side and start cutting through the weed again. It's been an absolutely stunning autumnal morning the mist rolling off the lakes, the sun's now started to rise behind me over pit three. And I'm hoping that when it comes over the trees and hits pit two, I think the bite time might be around 10, 12 o'clock, just as the water starts to warm up a little bit. Well, I've just finished that first brew of the morning and the bites actually come much quicker than I expected. The rods just absolutely rattled off and we're into one. It's actually kiting very quick over to the left. What a way to start the day. Lovely sunny autumnal morning and we've bent into a car. The fish just weeded me up temporarily there. Just went pretty static in the water. Uh, but I've got him moving again now. It looks like a ball of weeds wrapped around his head and he's give up the fight. So we'll get him in there, give you a look at him. Yes, yeah, lovely. There he is. What's we're going to have to do? Love a folded reel handle. <laughs> yes, epic times. I'll wait to start the
So there it is, my first bite of the morning. A stunning mid-double, half linear. And it actually came to my right-hand rod, my first bite on that rod this session. My theory is they've come from the deep water and as they've approached the spot, they found the right-hand rod first this time. Anyway, let's get this little fella back. We've got a few hours left yet and hopefully we can snare a few more this morning. So I've just slipped that mid-double back and I just wanted to show you the rig quickly. As you can see, the lead has been discharged. The fish weeded me up, as I mentioned, while we were in the fight with it. But the putty hasn't moved an inch. And if I just do a quick check of the hook, as you can see, it's perfectly sharp. I can just slip another bait on that and get it back on the spot. The rod went back out perfectly, but the next few hours remained surprisingly quiet. To get out of Frimley Pitch, you have to cross the railway crossing. And you can only do this every hour. Therefore, I had to pack up and unfortunately, no more bites were forthcoming. Well, unfortunately guys, that is the end of the session. But I can't grumble, I've had an absolute epic time. Really exceeded my expectations from this session. Right now though, I've got to shoot off and pick my little boy up. So, I'll leave you on this one. Next time somebody says to you, be lucky, just remember, you create your own luck.